Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from YourBlackWorld.com, and um, I've got my homeboy back, uh, Dr. Wilmer Leon from Howard University. Dr. Leon is one of the leading uh, political scientists in the country, uh, especially since the great Ron, Wal Ron Walters died. I consider uh, Dr. Leon to be the leading political scientist in the country. Uh, how are you doing today, brother? I, I am doing well. I am doing well. Thank you. Thank you. But, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm one in a, in a long list and at the end of that list. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> but, thank no. you, but thank you very much. No, we, we, we need Dr. Walters, and I can believe what I want to believe. And, and, and you know, since Dr. Walters is gone, we got to pass the torch, and I'm helping to pass that torch to you because I believe in what you're saying. I, I really do. Well, thank um, you. Uh, you're welcome. Now, I want to ask you, um, uh, now this uh, uh, issue that we want to discuss today has to do with Rodney K. Stanberry out of Alabama, who uh, has been in prison for 13 years for a crime that it appears that he did not commit. Um, can you tell uh, the story of Dr. or excuse me, uh, Mr. Stanberry, uh, you know, quickly so we can kind of become aware yes. of the situation? Yes, in, in February of 1992. Two of Rodney Stanberry's uh, childhood friends, Renee White Cloud and Angel or Angel Melendez, came to visit Rodney in Mobile uh, from the from the Bronx. Uh, he, they were there for Mardi Gras, and he entertained them as friends will do. Uh, he introduced them in the course of their being at his at his uh, at his house. He introduced them to one of his best friends, uh, Michael and Valerie Finley. Rodney and Michael were hunting and fishing buddies, and they were both gun collectors. And Rodney, uh, first of all, wanted to show uh, Renee and an angel or at hell wanted to show them this rack of a of a deer that they had shot. And then also show them um, Michael Finley's gun collection. Um, Rodney's friends decided at some point to burglarize the Finleys and uh, to, to steal the gun collection. And so on May 2nd, 1992, the friends broke into the Finley's home expecting that the home would be vacant. But fortunately, that morning, Valerie Finley was at home. The two men knocked on the door. Mrs. Finley opened the door. The two men entered, burglarized the home, and I believe at the point of exiting the home, one of them uh, shot Mrs. Finley in the head, point blank, with a 9mm handgun. Hmm. Valerie Finley survived. Upon hearing of this, Rodney went to the Pritchard County Police, told them what he knew, and unfortunately for Rodney, that was the beginning of the end. And Rodney has just started his 15th year uh, behind bars. He was arrested in 1992. He was convicted in 1995. And he began serving his prison sentence in 1997 for burglary, attempted murder, and a number of other charges. Hmm. In a nutshell, that... And let me let me say quickly, go to free Rodney Stanberry, S-T-A-N-B-E-R-R-Y dot com. That is where you can find the more extensive uh, fact sheet. But that, in a nutshell, is is what happened. OK, now, um, jumping out of the nutshell, uh, I'd like to ask you. Why should I believe that Rodney didn't do this? I mean, everybody in prison, uh, you know, well, not everybody, but a lot of brothers in prison will say, hey, I didn't do it, man, I didn't do it. So what makes Rodney's case different from other cases where people uh, believe that they didn't commit the, or, or argue that they did not commit the crime that they're accused of? Well, well, first of, first of all, that's why I would say go to the go to the web page, freerodneystanberry.com, and read the fact sheet for yourself. It, the information on the web page is very extensive, and one can decide for oneself whether or not, in fact, uh, Rodney Stanberry did this or did not. The, 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 the simplest answer I would give you is there are work records that show that at the time that the attempted murder and burglary took place, Rodney Stanberry was at work. His, um, his supervisor has testified to that, in fact, came on my show 
and stated publicly, Rodney Rodney worked for BFI. He was a driver for for uh, the trash company, trash removal company BFI. His truck had broken down on the opposite side of town. Rodney's truck had been towed to the maintenance facility, and Rodney was in the maintenance facility waiting for his truck to be repaired, and there were a number of his co-workers that witnessed this. There are work documents that support this, and his supervisor has testified to this. So in a, that would be probably the number one reason why I would say that people need to take interest in this case and uh, and people need to look at how the case was prosecuted and uh, they would see that there's no way that Rodney Stanbury could be in two places at one time. So, you know, in, in, in a, you know, in a trial, you need, you know, you need witnesses and, and other forms of evidence, you know, um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't say things like DNA or blood samples or anything, but it seems like you would need something, right? That would say that he did this. Why do you, do you think that they, I mean, can, I mean, did they just pick him out? Uh, what, what, what do you think drove Rod? And I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here because I've seen enough to kind of actually believe that Rodney should be uh, exonerated or should be released, but mm-hmm. I, I, I want you know I want to kind of make sure the audience understands you know what what about all the witnesses and the trial and everything else I mean you know it's it's kind of a far fetched conspiracy theory at this point don't you think? Well, I, I don't think it's a far fetched conspiracy theory. I think what this is is in many instances, not in all, because your father uh was a police officer and and from all your accounts, an upstanding reputable police officer. Unfortunately, there are instances where detectives will look at the least common denominator, they will look at the simplest answer they can come up with, they will pursue that, and they will then find they will they will find facts to fit their theory instead of trying to solve the case. And one of the things that happened was Rodney went to the police immediately, told them who he thought was guilty, and they then thought, man, you're really too forthcoming here. You really must be trying to throw us off of your trail and put us on the trail of other people. That's the first thing. Then when you look at how the lineup was done, when you look at um, a, 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 he, he had poor counsel, poor representation in terms of counsel on a number of levels, they, they, the, the, the Finley, uh, I'm sorry, the Stanbury family, in my opinion, trusted the system at every turn. And the system failed them. Rodney spoke to the police without counsel, trusting the police. Rodney answered questions without counsel, trusting the detectives. And at each turn, what they were really trying, what seemingly what they were trying to do was they had decided he was involved. And instead of analyzing what he said from the perspective of his being innocent, they analyzed uh, what he said from the perspective of uh, conspiracy, being a co-conspirator or being involved. And the brother winds up in prison. So, what about these other two guys? I mean, did they did they have any role in this? Well, like, oh, one of them, and, and well, yes, they did. And in fact, um, I, I think it was Renee White Cloud actually um, gave testimony. He could he um, what's I'm trying what's the word I want to use? Uh, he admitted his guilt. Mm. But by but by the time uh, he gave his statements about his involvement and Angel uh, Melendez's involvement, the case had already started moving down the track. The prosecution had their theory, and this really became a matter of don't confuse me with the facts. I have what I have. I can get a conviction, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the conviction that I have. So also what happened was also what happened was Renee and Angel had gone back to New York and some of this really seemed to be the Alabama detectives did not really feel like being bothered with going to New York and getting the individuals who uh, who who had admitted to doing this. Mm. So the um, OK, so why did the guy that went to New York? Why Lazy he, police work. 
Well, well, why did the guy in New York, uh, he said Angel, why, why did he come back and, and, and confess his guilt? I mean, what was his incentive to incriminate himself? Now, uh, I believe it was, it was just, uh, now that's one where you have to go and look at the website to get all of that detail. Uh, I can't remember if he was in jail already on another charge or if he really just had a, a come to Jesus moment where he did not want to see his, his childhood friend, uh, take the fall for, uh, for the crime that he had committed. But at the end of the day, he has testified to the fact that he, in fact, was involved and that Angel Melendez was the shooter. And unfortunately, I believe it was Angel or Angel Melendez being the, being the thug that he was wound up being shot in another incident and has since. And I think both of these gentlemen now are deceased. Mm, wow. So, OK, so the. Uh, now, in terms of the conviction, the grounds for the conviction, what did they use to convict him? What evidence did they? I mean, I assume in court you have to they evidence, use it. Right? They, so. yeah, they use well, uh, and, and unfortunately, from what I understand, a lot of this evidence has been lost. Sloppy detective uh, uh, evidence keeping, but um, there was a there was a photo lineup that the police conducted and from what I understand it was an improper lineup they handed Mrs. Finley a picture of Rodney do you identify this guy do you know this guy yes that's Rodney Stanberry where do you know him he was in my house well he was her husband's best friend mm. um, okay. I don't know that there was ever testimony, or at least if there was, it came later from prompting from the prosecution that he was in fact involved in the uh, in the shooting. And there was also question about um, Valerie Finley had been shot in the head. And so there was some question about I don't want to say that she was mentally unstable, but there there is some question about her capacity to have made the identification based upon her medical condition. Okay, so was that the main piece of evidence they used for the conviction? Was her identification, or yes. did they have any anybody else that? Yes. Really? Okay. So what about? No, the there was no physical. There's no. No, there's absolutely there's absolutely no physical evidence connecting Rodney Stanberry to the event. In fact, there are other witnesses in the neighborhood who saw uh, Renee and Angel coming out of the house who will testify they knew they know Rodney Stanberry and he was not one of those individuals involved. Okay. And I've had these I've had yeah, I've had these in the, uh, one of these individuals as a guest on my show. And uh, he testified that he was standing in his front yard, and he saw the gentleman exiting the home, and and Rodney Stanberry was not one of those people. Really? Okay. So in terms of people in the community who have stepped forward to support Rodney, anybody involved with the case, you mentioned his supervisor, uh, his direct supervisor, who, who, by the way, is not black, right? He's an older white guy, right? He's an older white guy, and I have said to my audience, anytime an old white guy in Alabama is going to step up for a brother, you know the brother's got to be innocent. Well, you know, it's certainly, <laughs> that's certainly a heavy piece of evidence to consider. For sure. um, of course, we're playing in the stereotypes, but... Hey, it, it's Alabama. Most stereotypes there you go. seem to apply, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to Alabama uh, actually next week, so I need to be quiet here. But the, With know, a banjo on your knee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Alabama, but but I, I'll say this. Well, let me ask you this. Okay, so in, in addition to the supervisor, has anybody else uh, can come forward? Any, any, uh, you know, any? Oh, his, his supervisor again, the gentleman that uh, worked uh, that, that lived across the street from the Finleys, uh, a, n a number of his coworkers, and and really here's here's something else I think that needs to be considered is that Rodney is starting his fifteenth year. He's had two parole hearings. At a minimum, the brother should be paroled. Right. But he has he has refused. He has refused to admit guilt to a crime to which he did not commit.
And that really seems to be at this late stage of the game. Why he remains incarcerated is that the parole board wants to hear Rodney say, I did it. I have repented. I am sorry. May I please move on with the rest of my life? And he refuses to say he was guilty, even though that simple statement is most likely what has prevented his being, I mean, is what has led to his being denied parole in two parole hearings. Wow. And, and, you know, and that's such a horrible, that that's torture right there. That reminds me Absolutely. of of the witch trials when they would basically torture the hell out of you until you admitted that you were a witch. So either they win or they they win or they win, right? Either you they win or they win. And they say, "Ha, ah, see, we knew the person was a witch." Or you don't confess and they torture you to death. You know, I mean, that's ridiculous to me. I mean, there's no room for the truth. You you effectively We're going to flip this coin. Right. Heads I win, tails you lose. Exactly. You have yeah. the, the the truth out of the room and and focus solely on getting the objective that you want to see happen. So in this case, they either want to bring this brother to his knees and get him to confess to something that he insists that he did not do. And I'm sorry, if I'm sitting up in prison 15 years, I'm going to be tempted to just say, you know what, I did it. Or especially if I did it. If I did it, I'd be like, you know, hey, you got me, okay. You got me. Go home now, right? <laughs> right? Right. But, but right. the fact that he's holding strong after 15 years can't be ignored, you know, and, and this is to, to all the other evidence. Well, and this is something, too, that, that, of course, doesn't get factored into court, but in terms of people understanding the dynamics of this, Rodney's father is 77 years old. His mother is about the same age and is now in a rest is now in a um, in a in a rest home. A nursing home. A nursing home. Thank you. Um, uh, Rodney was truly a family man, and he has a child that he has never been able to see outside of prison. All of these things factor into if this brother were had any sense in his head and were guilty. And understood that admitting his guilt would 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 facilitate his getting released. He would have admitted to this a long time ago. Exactly. This is not this is this is not uh, uh, James Anthony Brown, James Anthony Brown uh, uh, from Tom Joyner sticking to the bit. This, this is this is not. I'm sorry, J. Anthony Brown. This is not just sticking to the bit because there's nothing to gain from continuing to admit or continuing to stay innocence, particularly if you're guilty. There's nothing except for principle. That's right. all this brother is, is standing on, is principle. I did not shoot my friend. I, I did not shoot my wife's friend. And I am not going to admit that I shot my wife's friend. Wow. Wow. That's uh, that's deep. That's deep. You know, um, it looks like Wilmer uh, froze a little bit, and so what I'm going to do is uh, uh, keep talking until. Many people. Uh, I, I think he's frozen a little bit, so I'm going to keep talking uh, to kind of finish up the interview, uh, and maybe Wilmer will come back. But uh, you know, the the issue with Rodney Stanberry is very simple. Um, you know, he's he's sticking to his guns and saying he didn't do it, even though he has every incentive to go ahead and confess, especially if he did it. Um, by now, 15 years, he would have confessed. Uh, you can't punish somebody because they won't confess to a crime that they did not commit.